Either one of us currently the 4th going into the 5th of November 2013. Today's main topic is still Tropical Storm Hyon, and uh, this is expected to become a rather severe and potentially violent typhoon as it approaches first Yap, Palau, and then the Philippines. Later on in the update, we're also going to be talking about what else is going on out here because we also have a very disorganized tropical depression over the Philippines, although this has caused some injuries today. Actually, a tornado uh, developed there near Cebu, caused about four injuries, something that is quite common even with weak low pressure areas as they push through um, the tropics. They often do spawn tornadoes mainly due to the fin over the land and then the, uh, the instability in the atmosphere. They often are weak and this one looks like it damaged about 10 homes and did cause some injuries, but something to watch there. Now this potentially could become a tropical storm and could potentially become the name tropical storm by midweek impacting southern Vietnam and bringing some heavy rain showers and pretty much of risk of flooding out there into southern Vietnam. But nothing the area there really will not be too unprepared for. So right now that is a tropical depression. I've seen that Pagasa downgraded back to a low pressure area. Uh, pretty much a smart idea, but uh, JMA still has it as a TD. You can see it right here inside the five-day track of the more important storm system and the one that is going to be causing the risk for the loss of lives out here potentially, but I do think it is going to be at least causing some significant damage damage there into portions of Samar, Lette, northern Mindanao, and really much of the size, including the Bohol region, which is still um, recovering from the, the catastrophic earthquake here uh, just two weeks ago. And unfortunately, due to the instability of the earth, you get a tremendous amount of rainfall down on top of this area. Um, it potentially could creating a very serious risk for flooding, not only flooding, but also landslides. Something to watch out for here. Now, this is a track from the U.S. military expecting to become a quote-unquote super typhoon that's what they call it 120 gusting up to 145 knots just prior to landfall that would put it right around a mid to high end category four tropical system um very close to the same intensity as we saw last year with bofa now was a little bit farther towards the south and it potentially still could go farther down there towards the south but at least at this time much of the numerical guidance and just the overall steering flow is pointing there towards Visayas. like i said Lette and Samar area, possibly southern Luzon. Um, that really is going to be bringing a big risk, not only out here for coastal areas, but also Cebu, but more so um, for the metropolitan area there of Manila, because as our storm system starts to track inland, if it does take this path, it's going to be moving over the inland sea here. And what I mean by that is that it still is going to have a fairly significant fuel source. Yeah, we're going to see some disruption in the cloud cover here due to the mountains there in Visayas and southern Luzon. But as it tracks off there towards the northeast, if it does move over Visayas, um, it still could be bringing some pretty damaging winds and heavy rainfall farther there towards the north into Manila. So something to keep an eye on here. But really at this time, everybody from southern Luzon even extending out there towards Manila into Mindanao extending out there just north of Palawan. I think you really need to watch this. Um, it still could waver farther there towards the north, towards the south. I mean, this is looking at a scenario uh, likely by Friday. I'm making this update on Monday night going into Tuesday. So still a lot could change by then. That was by the GFS model. I mean, just take a look here at the nav gem. Uh, that pushes right on shore a little bit farther there towards the south, but basically in a very similar path right over Visayas. And like I said, the, the overall background flow is the key thing with this. You have a high pressure ridge farther off here towards the north, and that's going to keep this and buffer it towards the south. So if you're in anywhere up here and you're worried about the storm system, you don't need to be. Um, if you're anywhere from Taiwan over towards the southern Japanese islands and basically southern China for that matter, and even northern Luzon, that high pressure ridge that's keeping things cool off here towards the north is also acting like a wall and acting like a buffer, and it's going to keep this farther down there towards the south. Let's scroll through this model outlook just one more time. Remember, these graphics are courtesy of Weather Underground, their wonder map tool, always a great tool to use. This is GFS by Wednesday evening going into the over night hours, uh, yep, you're going to be getting impacted by likely some typhoon strength winds, heavy rainfall, similar conditions a little bit farther down there towards the south in Palau, now Karora on the southern end of the island. Um, you're really not going to be seeing the full extent of this storm system, but it really still is going to be bringing some pretty rough weather out here and definitely not going to be a pleasant day 
going through Thursday as our storm system pulls off there towards the west. It's going to be some pretty rough conditions on first Yap and then Palau as this does skirt off there towards the north. Not as bad as we saw last year with Bofa in Palau. I, I don't think it will be, but there is a risk of storm surge with this and also some pretty heavy rainfall, so the risk of flooding. And you can see those winds just coming in there from the west as it does skirt there just towards the north. But this has wavered a little bit farther towards the south as far as the model outlooks since earlier this morning. If it does waver even farther towards the south, and I mean just a, a it has the people in Okinawa, they know all about how the difference in just a little bit of an area here or the center moving here makes all the difference in the catastrophic winds this could bring. So uh, definitely hope it does track farther there towards north so the biggest population on the islands here does miss this. But if it does waver farther towards the south, we're going to be talking about a different story altogether going through the day there on Thursday morning. Now, let's take a look ahead. And skirted ahead here to Friday, Friday afternoon. Uh, this model, like I showed you there earlier, making landfall there around Lette and Samar. So a lot to talk about here. This is just one in a series of updates uh, on this storm system and on the risk it does bring out here, not only for storm surge, high waves up to about 9 to 10 meters high are going to be potentially occurring here by Thursday and the Friday. Also the heavy rainfall and the risk of flooding and landslides and also the very high risk of flooding and landslides there just south into Bohol. So stay safe out there, everybody. Uh, please tell your friends, tell your neighbors, this is coming because I, I I fear this could be a very damaging and serious storm system later on this week. And if you do watch my video updates um, quite often, I know a few of you are uh, really do stick to these and watch them, and I really thank you. But if you do, you know I don't use wording like that all too often. I don't say that storms are going to be catastrophic or potentially deadly. I often try to be conservative on these. Well, this one, given its overall organization at this time and the model consensus and just the ingredients in place, I do think it potentially could be a very serious storm. So with that said, stay safe out there, everybody, and thanks for watching.